gonna show you how to make placemats without using binding. And sometimes you just don't wanna spend that much time or you don't have that much time. So equally cute is this placemat that's just the image. So I wanna show you how easy this is to make. So what you're going to need is the placemat panel that you wanna use. This is the January panel from the monthly placemat panels program that I've made for Riley Blake Designs. So we're gonna use these six designs. And then I'm going to use these three coordinated prints, which are snowflakes, obviously, that go perfectly with those six placemat designs. Then I'm just going to use a little bit of extra batting that I have left over from a project. Cutting mat, cutting ruler, rotary cutter, scissors, optional fabric marker, you need thread, a sewing machine, and some pins. So let's get this set up. The first and most time consuming thing that you need to do is you need to cut apart the six different designs with a quarter inch border. Now the way they are on the panel, it has this blue in between each of them. All right, so the most important part, the place where you wanna spend the most time for your best results is cutting this placemat so that it's going to have a quarter inch of the color border all the way around the center of the design. So I have already cut this edge and I'm gonna show you how we need to scooch and make sure that this is getting cut right. So I have this lined up along the two inch line. And then I have this edge here on the quarter inch line so that I can lay my ruler down along this three inch line. Now, before I cut, I need to double check that the white of the, of the design is going along the quarter inch marking, which you can see it absolutely is not. So keeping this, this edge lined up, we're just going to gently pull along the placemat until that blue line is on the quarter inch dot mark on this ruler all the way along this edge. And you know, keeping, keeping it flat. So again, this is the most time consuming and most important part to get a nicely squared placemat. All right, so now I have two sides and since they're nicely lined up, I'm just going to turn my cutting mat on my workspace. Okay, so now I have that cut quarter inch nicely done. Hardest part is complete. Okay, now I'm going to be using this fabric for the backing because it's gonna be the easiest to show you exactly how I'm doing this with the contrast. I'm just gonna open that up. And I know you won't have a whole bolt, but you're just gonna want a piece that is bigger than this placemat that we just cut. So a little bit bigger than 11 by 18. So I'm just laying this on the fabric and I'm gonna trim it so that there's a little bit extra from the placemat all the way around. Okay, so because that fabric was doubled over, I actually cut two backs at the same time. So I can use that for two different placemats. I'm gonna put one aside. Now I'm gonna take my extra batting from another project, a quilt project, and it is also folded in half because the size works. I'm gonna take the batting, or the batting. I'm gonna put the backing on the batting. Too many B words. And then I'm gonna trim the batting to the same size. And because of the scrap that I had, I'm gonna be cutting two, bat two battings for placemats at the same time. I'm gonna take the extra one and put that aside. Now I have a batting layer, the backing face up. And then I'm gonna take one of the um, placemats and put it face down. So we have right sides together for the backing and the front of the placemat and then the batting on the back. 
And now I'm just going to pin this together. Okay, now I'm gonna sew all the way around the edge from the edge of the placemat front, not from the edge of the backing and the batting with a quarter inch, which will basically make it so that we won't see this blue. I'm gonna go all the way around and leave open a section for turning. Now that that's sewn together, I'm going to trim the backing and the batting to match with the edge of the front of the placemat. So now that's all even, and now I'm gonna turn it right side out. I get it turned as well as I can with my fingers, and then I'm gonna use this cute little flamingo stiletto turning tool from Riley Blake by Beverly McCullough of Pink Flamingo Toes. And just very gently get those corners out as well as I can, but making sure I do not poke through the fabric. All right, now I'm going to iron it so that these edges are nice and crisp. And then I'm going to iron it and fold this under so that we won't see that when we start quilting and do the edge. Okay, I got that all pressed. And then we're going to top stitch at a, with an eighth an inch all the way around the edges to secure those seams and also close that opening. But then you're also going to want to quilt. And what I did on the first one was just kind of squares and two inches apart. So I'm going to show you how easy that is to do. I'm going to start from the top corner and just kind of make it even. So I'm going the top corner. Let me turn this over. Okay. One thing that's really cool about this cutting mat from Riley Blake is that it's black on one side and white on the other. So you can see how much easier it is to see this project when we have the black side up. So I'm going to do that two, two inches out and then it's two inches to either side. So that's gonna be nice and even. I'm gonna take this fabric marker and I'm just going to draw a line, maybe. Hot pink line, but don't freak out because once I steam that, if I put any heat on it, it just magically goes away. But it makes it really, really easy to get that quilting done quickly. All right, so that's all marked. We're gonna go sew around the edge and along all of those lines and we're gonna end up with a beautiful placemat to go with this one. So let's head back to the machine. So now I'm stitching around the edge with an eighth inch seam just to secure those seams and close the opening where I turned it. And then I'm gonna stitch along all of these pink lines to do the quilting. Okay, so I've stitched along all those lines and because I filmed it, I can tell you that it took me nine and a half minutes to sew around the edge and do all of that quilting. If you wanted it to take less time, you do a different pattern. Maybe you just do the lines in one direction. I just kind of like the square look. So now I'm gonna trim all of these um, threads and then I'm gonna show you how this pink is gonna go away with the iron like magic. All right, so the last step is to get rid of the um, fabric pen, this hot pink. So I'm just going to take my iron and run over that and see how it just is magically disappearing. This might be my, one of my favorite parts. I love it. And now no one knows how we got those lines so perfect, completely gone. So that's how easy it is.